Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Bells Balls Bells Trustee Regular Board Meeting. It's February 28th, 2023. I thought it was like 29. And Tuesday um, is now 6.01 or 6.02 when we're down here in the lower theater. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I need to approve the minutes for Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. And is there in your packet? Motion to approve the minutes of February 14th, 2023. And a second? Second. All right, thank you. Well, any just further discussion uh, in the minutes? Hey, what comment I would make is uh, brief minutes that are brief are good. Right? Okay. Well, in order nothing, to... nothing is bad. So, I mean, it's almost, we're getting close to nothing is being recorded. Well, we did those because of the open meeting laws issues about getting them posted on time. And the only way I can get them posted with the, with, is to just do that. The bare minimum, which is the action minutes, who attended, what motions were made, what the votes were. So that's really what those minutes reflect. And that's what's required by the law. So really to make us compliant, that's what we've been trying to do. Although it gives us no, it gives the public no idea about what the discussion nope. entailed or nope. anything like that. So nope. it, and again, if we're going to be compliant with the meetings law, that's what we have to do. Otherwise, otherwise the, line. the longer minutes require more time, and then you're not posting on time, and then we get complaints about that so sort of one you know, pick a poison here yeah mm -hmm. and if, if truthfully if people wanted to watch the meetings are on fact tv yes they are so if you really want a video record or just a record a record that'd set, be a complete record yeah feel free to watch we have huge ratings so you can have yes a we do we can be quite controversial at times so i'm sorry i'm gonna give away a chance to sit down we're just <laughs> looking at the minutes right now okay for February 14th, 2023, we do have a motion and a second. Those, I wanted to have a chance to look at them and see if you have any um, comments on the minutes. I read them last night. Okay. That's it? That's your comment? Okay. <laughs> Hearing nothing further, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, we're good. Okay. Any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification of future meetings? I did put at your uh, seats a request for a permit for a road race for the Central Elementary School. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a course that's laid out, a date that they're requesting, which is April 1st, and it's a morning event. Um, they'll start at the middle school or under Central Elementary. So we can make that item number four and just add yes, it there. Absolutely. Also, I would like to add um, a discussion about the um, maybe choosing a village annual report dedication. Okay. And a suggestion from the last um, meeting I was at, and uh, I'd like to make that number five. Okay. And that would be it. Okay. Public comment on items. I don't really see anybody here who wants to talk about. Anything to do? All right. So we move on to the manager's report. So I also put a copy from DLCT of an uh, updated program that they're going to be offering. It's the uh, Municipal Access Portal. And as I guess, they'll be providing information for elected officials and, and people in government that maybe is not um, direct what they would normally keep in their normal. Uh, the LCT website, which has quite a bit of information. So, if there is something that uh, you would like to log in for that, they are asking for some action. We all do have individual logons. So, the big key is to make sure you have your email address if you want to get uh, access to that specific portal. Again, if you don't, not necessarily that you need to, just a uh, piece of information for you in case you. Uh, Wanted to have that access. Okay. Great. Good. Anything else? Is that it? I'll say. Okay. All right. Moving on to the agenda. First thing is to um, approve the banner. Let us discuss the banner application in front of us. Right. I tried to get a full 
copy of the banner to print, I could only get about three quarters of it. Yeah, we got so I'll pass, yeah. this one. And we yeah. did pass it around, pass it through, pass it down. I tried to get it bigger so you could actually see it. Unfortunately, every time I tried to get it bigger, I cut it off. <laughs> so that's the best we can do yeah. with uh, what it'll actually look like. So I did a request by the touring company at Wild Goose who was presenting the show. And they want the banner to run from March, be hung on March 9th and run until April 1st. Correct. Right. The... <laughs> Is there, is this about Rockingham or Bells Falls, this play? No, no. That's just it's an, original, original, it's an original play. No. It's run on Broadway. This is okay, real, okay so it's Broadway. This is a real yeah, production. This is not somebody's high school you know, <clears throat> project. It's a real deal. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the banner application by the Wild Goose players. You need a second? I'll second. Discussion on the banner. Is there any discussion? Right. What? Uh, well, are they from Falls Falls? Their sure office are. is right down, downtown. They're right down Right by the 44 steps. 44 steps. Have you, you haven't seen their they have a sign? Right, it's their sign. Yeah. Oh, stair, okay, some of us mentioned the street. Yeah, stair side building. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. You see them in their periodically performing, you know, rehearsing and doing stuff, building stuff. So they're very active. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So it's a $50 fee. Yes, it's a village. Whatever, whatever the fee is. Uh, our agency is based in the village is 50 bucks. And they're down. Yeah. Yep. So if there's nothing else, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, is there anyone opposed? No. Okay. Then it passes. That'll be interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. Next item on the agenda is the FERC relicensing update. Scott. So this project or process has been dragging, as most of you know, you probably have been seeing snippets of news about this for an extended period of time. But the, the piece that's of greatest interest to us and anybody else who has a direct interest to comment really will start in May. And that's when the formal comment period will open. And at that point, then um, we'll have an opportunity to direct very specific types of comments to them, whether it be about uh, the fencing along the canal or improvements to the canal walls or any of a host of other items that we've been trying to work with them about access to the green space uh, along the firefighter memorial so we can potentially use it periodically in the summer for activities, all of these things that we approach the hydro about and are always given pretty much a no answer and then saying, well, as soon as we get done with the licensing, we'll be sure to talk to you. So it would appear to me that if there's anything that we want from them over the next 50 years, because I think that's how long this licensing actually goes for, we should consider writing it down, putting it in the public comments, which requires them to respond and make sure that other levels of government are aware, our senators and our and our uh, Washington officials, so that if there are things that we really want, which we do, we'll be able to hopefully get some assistance in getting to yes. So that is really what this is for, for informational purposes. I'll share with the town as well. And then hopefully um, when this opens in May, we'll be able to uh, have information that we can specifically uh, submit so that we have to can get specific answers to some of our concerns or improvements or other items that we think are important to our community. How does this set up alongside our um, renegotiation about separate? Rate? The issue of the tax stabilization agreement is a separate issue mm -hmm. and not covered by this FERC license. Right. So that will be a whole nother discussion about how that process is going to go on, but FERC is really an opportunity for the community to ask for very specific actions. Like I said, it covers an extended period of time, so if you're silent, it'll be a long time coming until you can get any, uh, any real activity. Right. The, uh, <clears throat> do you have someone, uh, like a 
consultant or I know we've dealt with <clears throat> consultants about our discussions with them on rates. We do have a <clears throat> professional appraiser who does hydroelectric dam. Um, that, that's his specialty. So we've already engaged him and he's starting that process of the appraisal. Okay. So and then there'll be some but on this particular this particular uh, comment period, are you have you got some assistance to help you? We have not gone and put together with anybody any uh, specific, you know, highlighted items. So we're going to work on some things that we already know about, just things that relate to the depot bridge project, all of the, all of the uh, maintenance and upkeep of the canal. Like I said, access to that's really the, space. That's very very important. All those things are important to us. Um, so we want to make sure that we can get, get specific. Uh, Eric's Cove. There's other potential right. Improvements there for access and people want access to the water. So you know, all of that is controlled really through that process. So it'd be important for us to get together and have very specific legitimate issues that we want to address. Now the new uh, uh, Quebec Hydro bought out the buyout company, Hydro, you know, right. whatever. It was just a holding company that was in the right, right, right. Yeah. The uh, so when is our uh, negotiation on rates? Uh, when is that coming up? They have not given us any real specific timetable, so we are hoping that we get the appraisal back over the summer. Okay, and probably start in the fall. And have so a, we'll just we'll just treat it as a whatever the appraised value is will be what the, that'll yeah. lead the discussion, and I think we'll have to all have a conversation as we talk about strategy and how we want to move forward. Right. And the hydro is basically the same personnel that was there before. Yeah. They just got a new parent. Right. So yeah. we're dealing with some of the same folks. I'm all of the same folks. Not right. so. Well, we, you know, we uh, we had a very cordial agreement or discussions with with the new owner or the now the former owner, uh, which was in sharp contrast to our. And I wasn't involved in the history of. I know it's been very difficult with the, uh, the other Canadian companies. So right. hopefully, hopefully this will uh, this will also go well. Well, these are big decisions, right? They have major impacts. Obviously, mm -hmm. they have a huge impact on our tax. Yeah, well, if we have an appraisal of that they're going to return with their own appraisal. We've also been talking to some people in the state as well. So there's some conversations at that level because the state has some interest in this as well. So we'll, we'll pull it all together. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit closer to fall. Anything further, anyone? Move on to item number three. Um, the sewer department budget A is the operating budget. So I've got Rob here so he can. Always tell me where I'm wrong, which is very good at pointing out things that I'm wrong about. <laughs> so, so, so there's a couple things. First of all, in that proposed budget, there was a comment there that Alyssa had added about three percent. So all of those revenues are adjusted really based on consumption more so than the rate. So the, the idea there was. Again, looking at historical consumption and looking at if we added a three percent increase in our rate, those would that would be the additional revenue that we would be projecting for 2024. And that changes because Rob goes through a whole process where he builds things out based on utilization. We have a chargeback that goes against the capital as well as what they use um, for actual uh, sewage treatment, and then he comes up with a bill. So and then he bills them on a quarterly basis as we go forward. So it, it's a little bit of a catch up sometimes. We're always a, a, a little bit behind in terms of how things are posted versus what you see in terms of the revenues. But traditionally, he pretty he pretty much gets it to where we need to be in terms of budget. So the the, the question I had <clears throat> was uh, I can understand that on the second item. Uh, the three bonds, uh, the bond, the RBC bond, the USDA bond, and the Headworks bond. If if those are fixed, if those are fixed payments, if there's a fixed 
principal and interest payment. That's not what this is. That's not what that is. Well, you probably use that, right, Rob? Well, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's their portion right. of, of, the the larger, yeah, okay. of the larger. So we each quarter, I come up with what their usage is, the percentage of what their usage is of the plant. And I charge that against that bond payment per quarter. Oh. So it changes per quarter, the percentage. And so having a 3% in there is appropriate? Well, it's it's how, it's how that's figured on the initial one is figured on what we have in the budget. So it's what yeah, because the projected and then we do a true up, which is the actual one we spent. But not until after the quarter's up. Not until after the year, year is up and the audit's done. Wow. Oh, well, I haven't done a true up for 20 23 to 22 hasn't done because we're just getting the audit back. Audit so back. I can't do that until April. Right. So the true, the, the actual bill, the actual true up, whether and it's usually on the bonds, it's usually pennies. I mean, it's usually within pennies. Mm -hmm. It's the actual, the first one or the second one, the sewer usage. That's the big one that could change depending on what we spend and what it costs us to run the plan. So, right. But um, the, so that that's why I think on the on payments. It could change because of the utilization. Mm -hmm. Correct. But okay. the debt service isn't going to go up 3%. Yeah. But that that's schedule that. stays the same. Stay, stays that's the same. Right. Right. So I, I, I question adding 3%. We're adding 3% to the sewer charges, the user charges. Yes. And that's the board. So that's why, you know, Walpole will also pay 3% increase. Right. But again, on the, on the debt service, that would if the debt service is fixed, mm -hmm. then there wouldn't be a 3% increase, I don't think. <clears throat> yes, because there's a 3% increase increase on what they use. So the price, I don't know, how do you how does it price drop? Is it or, per per no, gallon? No, gallon it's, it's not it's price what, what their strength is, it's what their flow is, what their strength yeah. of their waste is. Yeah. So there's a price that we put on each. Oh, I understand that. So that's all going to go up three percent. Plus. So the amount of his figures are going to change. Well, yeah. We're going to collect more from that. Yeah, your your base debt won't change, but but the other but the inter the inter revenue costs, the potential utilization will, will definitely change, and if we add a three percent multiplier, Jig is correct in terms of it's not a direct three percent change, but there will be an impact. Mm -hmm. The debt service stays the same. The debt service is, is fixed, and so I just I just think. But his true up costs always sort of take into all the other factors and based on the utilization and what his treatment is based on this, like he said there. You know, he has various measures about what's actually coming from them and what it costs him to treat that. Uh -huh. That also changes too, so that doesn't stay consistent. Otherwise, it'd be easy. You could forecast it really based on prior year utilization yeah. and just add a now so number. On that same topic, yes. uh, Rob, the if you look, do you have the budget in front of you? Uh, if you look at the actual for 2022, yeah. it appears that the uh, fourth quarter payment uh, for items two, three, four, and five. Are not reflected. What what payments? You numbered them. What are they? Well, the the bond, our budget. The bond the, payments. The uh, no, he's still looking at the revenue. You know, if you look, if you look at our, if you look at the budget for two thousand twenty three. Mm -hmm. The headwork bonds mm -hmm. is thirty four thousand. Right. Okay. The RBC bonds are thirty six thousand. The uh, USDA bonds is 120,000. Oh, okay. yeah. If you look over on the actual, it looks like for those three items, we haven't collected the fourth quarter. There's there's four quarters, however you slice it, because we bill um, the quarter. You know, when the quarter ends in June, I bill in July. So whether we post it back or there's that fourth quarter. The first fourth quarter, so it's always behind one. You know what I'm saying? So there's only four quarters that we fill. So there's not just three quarters. There's always four quarters, and it might not be the true four quarters of the budget, but there's four quarters. Yeah, and, and I think we try to go back and put it yep. in to the correct budget year. So right. I think you've already closed 2022, right? Yeah, you yeah, closed yeah, it. So that's I think the problem is, 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 is that in 23, 
when we budgeted the revenue, we were a little, we were a little north of where we should have been. So to compare the budgeted revenue to the actual of the twenty two is not gonna accurate. Yeah, not gonna be accurate. Well, and, they, and, and there's a substantial increase in the three bonds from what we supposedly collected last year. I, I raise yeah. this almost every time we get the financials because it looks like we're always a quarter short on the, on the revenues mm -hmm. that we show. And, and as I say, if you look at those bond payments uh, versus what we actually got the previous year, there's no new bonds. So uh, I don't know why we're, well, of course, I don't know, maybe the uh, fiscal 30. 23 is wrong. It is wrong. That's okay. what I, I'm saying. So the bottom line is only $30,000 different from the actual 22 and what we budgeted in, mm -hmm. in 23. Uh -huh. And some of those uh -huh. lines, somehow they, I got them switched July. or whatever, right? Like, uh -huh. like Mill Street yeah. only got 20000 but it should be closer to 60 because yeah but another line got too much that should have had less so they, okay. they just switched so, places yeah so all of those budget ones for walpole is, is screwed yeah they're all like interim yeah. mixed and changed and and just wrong fixed. okay <laughs> yeah right. wrong. then 2024 they're more than what yeah. 2023 because we're looking at like yeah. half a year payment uh so in actual right. for 2023 right yeah. the base rate uh, does does show up from 2022, which it should. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, for this, nope. but I'm glad we got that. The confusion really was the 23 budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they were just messed up. Yeah. Now I, I've got another one. Can I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The, Nobody else is jumping in. Other, <laughs> you know, I noticed, um, although the budget, the budget, you know, I look at this acceptance as a critical item for us. Okay. And um, we showed uh, 294000 in 2022. Our budget, for some reason, was only $236. Uh, and our budget for the next year is $295. Now, the Kind of the corresponding to that is on the expense side, uh, the uh, charges, uh, I think it's on page three, where we have, yeah, it's on page two of the budget. Uh, the middle section, other expenditures, the sludge grit <clears throat> disposal, uh, and the RMI contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, it's, uh, uh, it's thirty thousand in the budget. It was twenty one thousand. The two items last year. If you look at our actual uh, so far this year, we're at sixteen seventeen thousand for sludge, and we're already we're at ten thousand for the RMI contract. And we've still got a third of the year to go. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but here, my, that's, I'll get into that later. But my point here is that, you know, if if our grid costs are going up and our RMI costs are going up, we ought to see an increase in the subject. subject. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're also talking about a fancy capital expenditure to get uh, better handling of the output of the dryer. But if if the if the revenue is going to plateau on the septage, then I think we really have to question, you know, what what do we want to do here? Uh, We've already collected 209,000 yeah, on exactly. the septage. And we're only half a year in, right. basically. You know, we've got five months, got five five months left. <clears throat> yeah. So it will be So we've been very conservative on our septage. About 15 coming this month. Okay. So... Yeah, so I, 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 I'm, I'm convinced that the, the budget for this year will be exceeded. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which is why my concern is more. that my concern is the budget for next year. Yeah. Uh, I think there's going to continue to be a need for for septage, and uh, uh, so anyway, the uh, 
Uh, I just I put a question mark on that. So you think it should, we should be charging more? Is that what you're what you're saying? Well, we did. Well, raise, I don't know about the charge. I I would expect that the cost, if our costs are going up, right, then it would seem as though these septage companies are charging more. Yep. And uh, so yeah, I would expect our revenues to to reflect. You had that discussion. I mean, we have had yeah. that discussion about whether or not to raise. Septage rates. So don't forget, sewer rates are yeah. different than what he charges a septage. Yes, no, right. that's what but, I mean. Yeah. But we did raise septage, I believe, last spring, Rob? I think so. It yeah. wasn't that long ago. Right. And we've looked at that and we talked about raising it, but we're still pretty much at the high end of all of our other regional points. Mm -hmm. But people still come to us because of convenience. Right, because they can do point, it 24 hours a day. Right. So. Well, yeah, it just, it's just the ease of it. Yeah. Right. But at some point, if you if you get too high, you'll drive yourself out. Oh, yeah. And I wouldn't want to do that. I mean, I, right. think, it's, I think it's smart to, you know, what I'm just saying is that if, if the if the pressures are happening all around us, right. we ought to see the benefit of it. Uh, I think uh, probably a wise course in this <clears throat> respect would be to maybe leave our septage as, as is and look at the first six months of our actuals. And if we see major changes, then we would come back and say maybe we need a January 1 increase. Yeah. At which point you can then capture the second half of the year and at least make yourself whole if we're finding that we're not keeping up. I understand what you're saying, Jake, but I think that we could still do that with a six month. Yeah. But so far this year, it looks like it's going to exceed it, what you're saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way, way past yeah, which is why we felt yes. okay with putting it for yeah. next year. Right. What we did. <laughs> you know, people obviously get busy as the spring and the, yeah. the summer. Yeah, I mean, I would expect that we would exceed last year's actual this year. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we should. And uh, if we do, we ought to see it. I mean, unless there's compelling forces, but like I say, if the compelling, if they're so compelling, then we should look at our costs. And too. it's okay to come in higher than what we budgeted for revenue. It's always okay. Always good. Right. It's always okay. But of course, our costs go up too. And those other communities don't have to haul their sludge up north because they didn't want to start this state. I'm going to I'm going to reserve comment on the uh, payroll increases at this point. Yeah. yeah. This point. Okay. Okay. Anyone else have anything on the <clears throat> wastewater? Did you wait? The first page. That's the first page. Yeah, the first page. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> So there was none on the first page, did you? Um, second page? Okay, second page, the, uh, the, the, the health insurance looks strange. You know, it, uh, I mean, you, you have to look at the two items, yeah. the health insurance and the insurance incentive. And uh, it appears uh, well, I, I, I'm looking at the budget for this year. I'm looking at the budget for next year, and it's a it's a huge increase. The, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. there's an, you know the, the health insurance goes to ninety seven and the uh, insurance incentive is sixty eight hundred. I don't that is that a Single person's uh, share if they, if they don't take the insurance. It's down there that doesn't have it. It's a portion of something upstairs. Right. Yeah. So that oh, support. Yes, that's right. Because we so split that percent of the town hall and the town hall employees. Yeah. Yeah. But last year we had a person that was taking it. So okay. So okay. this is so that's this why reflects. Yeah. This reflects this, the, the, the sewer treatment staff and as well as the share. Mm -hmm. okay. right. And then as far as the insurance goes, we did offer the platinum plan, which is a lot more expensive, plus the insurance company gave us a 13% increase. So that's why that yeah. is such a giant number, because it mm -hmm. went up. And that's from January. Yeah. Yeah. And then I used real numbers based on who was <coughs> in each plan in each department. So. That should be pretty close unless people start changing and 
having kids and adding families and you know stuff like that. And that is for four employees. Correct. Plus the share. Plus the share. Plus our share. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, obviously we we did the insurance upgrade because we wanted to be good to our employees, right? I mean, that's the, that's the bottom line. Is to well, be it's an incentive it's a pension issue. Right. Yeah. And I know we're gonna talk later, but as you can see, we've had a tremendous amount of turnover in the village with staff. And in Rob's case, I'm concerned because we have to get people that are certified. And right now there's a couple of people that are taking courses. So we're potentially losing the person we just hired into our most recent position. Um, again, because with our starting salaries and the current cost of living, we didn't, we didn't feel like he could make it with this uh, with this salary. So he just gave us a two week notice. So and he just started. So each time that happens, we go backwards because then we have to go back and try to recruit. It's not easy to find people who work in a sewage treatment plant. You'd be surprised, but when you do find somebody, then you have to worry about what kind of competitiveness you know, we have in the marketplace. And right now, with our turnover, it's a real challenge to keep them fully staffed. The, uh, oh, just one comment on, the, uh, on that 2022 actual, um, well, okay, this, this accrued payroll adjustment. Oh, yeah. But anyway, it happens with the audit. It gets adjusted then. Yeah. Right, the audit does that. That's for payroll that was paid in one year. That was for another year. Okay. So then the, the other question uh, is the uh, is is the sludge and, and grit and the RMI contracts. Right. The uh, we've got the budget is twenty and ten, and we're at you know six, seventeen and ten four through. Uh, eight months. So, what's uh, part of it is he had a compressor go on our dryer, so we had to do a couple of loads of wet sludge. So, that adds to your disposal costs, which is why you're seeing that input. And he's been able to change out the compressor, get back to regular disposal. On the RMI specifically, we still had some testing that was still being required, and I don't know, Rob, if they are. Uh, it's it's on both testing that we. Right. They, they were they were going to try. When we talked to them about this, they thought that they would decrease the over time. They would decrease the numbers of tests required. But so far, New Hampshire and Vermont, because we're somewhat of a new operation, has not done that. So we're still testing probably more than we will in the future. So. So there'll be so we definitely under budgeted for that line item. And again, we're hopeful that that at some point. They'll say, okay, we've got enough data, we don't need to keep doing this in with as much frequency, and then we will be in line with what we're currently budgeting. They just haven't been able to tell us when that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're you're okay with those numbers. We'll work, we'll work right. within it. I think we're okay. That's all I have. Anyone else have anything on page two? I had that one. On page two, we offered up. Another thing I wanted to point out is that we did put some additional money in for flushing uh, sewer lines. So we're going to be doing some paving in the village. So we'll have to clean some lines and do some work prior to the paving. And then I think Rob also wanted to get caught up on some, we've been a little behind in terms of our maintenance on some of the sewer lines. So that was an opportunity to catch up a little bit. So if you notice that line went from roughly almost mm -hmm. 18,000 to 25,000. And that's just to, to catch up on some of our deferred maintenance. Yeah. On page three. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a question on the, the vehicle replacement. The, I thought we were gonna reserve like seven thousand a year to cover the uh, 
the replacement of the truck. Every, I mean, I know we replaced the truck, I guess, this year, 2023. Um, I'm assuming we used the reserve. And on top of that, there was the 17,000. On top of the board, or does this 17,000? plus what was in the reserve. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the so what should the number be for the vehicle replacement reserve for the, for well, the truck? On, how often do based we, on the expected life of his vehicles, we thought we could do five thousand because he's not gonna have to replace these now. Yeah. Or at least seven for the Rob usually keeps his stuff past seven years. So we did it on the seven replacement cycle. Well, is there two is there two vehicles? Yeah. There's two vehicles. One of the nineteen ones. Right? One of the nineteen one the twenty-two. Right. And what did the new one cost? We got it for tw uh, 20, 20, 20 and change, yeah. change in, in a trade in. In a trade. Yep. The well, has to do some modification to it because we carry some specialty tools and he has some stuff in the truck line or in the bed. A few things that he has to carry because of the responses to the sewer blockages. So that adds a little bit of cost to it when he puts it out. Okay. Yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you normally try to, is the history been you always replace them at the same, both at the same time? No. Or are they, are they alternated out? Try to alternate them out. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think the last couple we've done, we've water done them on and we've done them on. So, you do two trucks. Yeah. Try to get a better deal that way. Try to, try to. My feeling is, I mean, we, we talked about, and I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I kind of think I should stay at seven grand. I think so too, because what I'd like to see uh, is, you know, in the year we buy a truck, right. you only see the seven thousand, you know, not the seventeen thousand, and uh, or whatever the whatever the approval is. That we, right, that we're doing. we can change so, it to that. Uh, I have another vehicle question. Yeah. Okay. Did, do we still have a dump truck? Oh. I heard that we could, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> That's why miscellaneous is up, up so much. Where is that? Oh, really? On the revenue side. On the revenue side, yeah. okay. First page of the budget, the issue budget, and all the reflection. On the very first page? Not mm -hmm. of the budget. Oh, the budget status for the next grouping. Yeah. yeah. Miscellaneous. No yeah. option. So that's what we got for? 28,000. 23,000, I think it was. Oh, so, so, so not all this 28,229. No, no other unfortunately, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. 22,000, 23,000. Good. Take that. Wow. Well, I'm trying to know what. 1990. Wow. It's 30. 33 years old? Yeah. Didn't have any electronics on it. That's why. <laughs> the company that died about it had one just like it. Find a sad one. See you go. Oh, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> huh. All right. Anything further on page three? No, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. And anyone else? Yeah. The, the issue of the rate increases, we're going to take up at a separate time. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to have a conversation in executive session. Yeah. Yep. So there we go. Yes. So the next thing would be the 10 year, the, the 10 year uh, wastewater treatment plant update. So, well, no, the other thing is, is we got that. Doing, and I'm still working on, but we're, we're doing the town's doing a paving project this year, this year and next year. Right. So we're looking at buying um, some manhole covers, bring the covers to change them out when they pave the streets, because they're going to end up taking those off when they grind it and pave it and do all that stuff. So we're uh -huh. to, to do that. So I'm working on prices right now to. Um, I got prices to do what he's going to do this year. I called the company um, to see if I we bought two years worth this year, the next year's to get we got a better price per struck per unit steel per 
for both the town and village, or town and village. The town's looking at doing some of their storm uh, you know, covers in their catch basis. So that's going to be, that's something we need to put somewhere well, the, or be aware of it because yeah. that's going to be a line item in that uh, paving bid when it comes in uh, as far as rebuilding structures. We've only budgeted a thousand for manholes. No, that, yeah, but that's typical. That, yeah. I'm talking more, it, it would be more on the third page under construction. Okay. Yeah. Contract work potentially. That would be thirty thousand. That would be thirty thousand. But I mean, I don't know what kind of okay. what kind of deal we could get if we could get a better price per unit to buy potentially like two years. Two years worth. Of one instead of one. Do you think you could deliver in time for the project? Well, it's it's more of a you lock in and then ask for so much, so much for this year and so much for next. Yeah, yeah for, for just you know you lock in and say hey, I like it the first of June. You know, I need so many by then just so. Because I don't know when that paving project's going to start. You know, they're putting it out here soon, but I don't know. You know, who's going to get it? It's going to go forward, but it's still something that we still got to plan for. And I don't. You know, it's going to be in that bid that we're going to. We're just going to have to budget for it too. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be enough. But if we have to, if we get a good price, it makes sense to buy so right. a, a nice deal for both projects. Thing. But I don't know. And you're talking just covers, rings and covers, rings the, and covers, the frames and covers. Yeah. And then how and much is the ring and cover? Right now, the price he got me was four four forty five roughly. Uh, yeah, for twenty four inch. So uh, not cheap. Not cheap. Mm -hmm. but, and so if we can get a better price than that, if we buy twice as much as what we need, mm -hmm. you get two instead of one. Right. That's right. So, it potentially might be worth it. It might be worth our weight to yeah, worth it when you do that. But it's you still might want to bump that up. That's, uh, I don't know what that number is going to be. So. Well, yeah. he's going to buy them this year before July, before the end of June. Yeah, oh, he's got well, thirty thousand cells left right. to yeah. use. Okay. All right, but it should be point. Point. okay. Right. Not too far off. Of what right, it is. right, right. I just I don't know what they're going to charge to redo the structures in the contract, the paving contract. Right. Okay, so we have thirty thousand for this year. Okay. We'll okay. Thirty thousand okay. yeah. next year. Yeah. At least look back at the last contract that they did out in Saxon Road too. So I don't know what they charged the mm. structures out there. But that would give us a ballpark. But that was just something I thought of today. I actually called the company and asked them. He didn't know the answer to the call boundary to see if they would be willing to get a better price. The debt schedule, we didn't, it wasn't total for this year. I know they cut off of the printer. Okay. Yeah, there it is. The total's at the bottom of each year. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got, we've got it for the uh, totals, but uh, for the balance of the um, And I noticed that uh, the Burt Lake Mill on the, the principal payments jump up significantly in 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why is that? So, it just doesn't seem like a 30 year payout. You know, the, the, uh, it's, a, it's listed as a 30 year from 2022 to 2051. Well, if you're clipping 149 a year, it's not going to take 30 years. We'll check our debt schedule. It might just be a typo on the cell. Yeah, because the interest is going down like it's supposed to. Right. right. Yeah. Because I think that I didn't think the totals were were going up much, but staying pretty steady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
guess that was the, I guess I took that out of order. That's okay. <laughs> So the 10 year update. So the engineers have worked with Rob and myself about some projects. Some of it is just related to heavy maintenance. You know, we talked about the wear and tear on the some of the systems because of the process of just going through and you know the grit and the other materials that he has to go through in order to process some of our, our sewage. We also included in there some um, flood proofing that would be eligible for coverage based on some of the storm events that we've had, as well as we put in a new sludge handling and storage system. And we threw all that into the project mix at this point, which you know gives you a big number and everybody starts to flip out. But the point of it is, is in this round, there's there's more money in the state revolving fund rounds that are that are now being uh, put together on terms of the priority list. So we wanted to get in for the biggest number we could get. And once we did that, we're then going to look at three other sources of offset for that that will drive that total number down. We still have not received a follow-up on the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program, which is a new clean energy infrastructure program, which we think we would be eligible for. Um, they have still not put out all the guidance on that yet as to how that's going to work. So we're waiting to hear what we might be eligible under that program. We're still working with Efficiency Vermont and Rob has been installing digital sensors and some other monitoring equipment with the idea that we're hoping that they'll come back to us with some sort of a program that will give us additional money so that we can run the dryer more efficiently. And so they would, they would be investing in that portion of that, that project as well. And then the third phase, which we have not looked at, is FEMA money for hazard mitigation, because obviously flooding your sewage treatment plant is a huge problem as we go forward. So some of those costs can also be offset by grant monies as well. So we're not looking at the traditional 55, 45 type of split on this. We think we can get closer to 65 or 70% grant funds when it's all said and done. So that's why we were aggressive on the numbers. I didn't want everybody to freak out, thinking, oh my God, we can't bond another $3 million because we would not come to you and ask you to bond another $3 million. We think we can drive that number down to a very reasonable number for bonding and then do some significant project work with all of those new federal funds and, and really put ourselves in a good position and increase the relationship to our capital investment in, in the uh, plant and operations. So, this all came from our engineers. We did apply or put ourselves into the process for this round of state fiscal year 2024 funds because, again, with ARPA monies and other funding monies, Is that this would be, that's that application. Okay. It's a robust application period right now. There's lots of additional federal monies in there. So we wanted to get the biggest potential bite we could get, but we won't know anything more for a significant period of time. They have public hearings scheduled all the way through the end of May, and they won't release any kind of idea as to where we stand on their intended use plan until the earliest is the end of June. So, so this 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 in this army later. So this has been submitted, related, right? Already, already submitted to the June the second of March. Correct. Okay. Through this week. Okay. And again, we're not committed to anything more than just getting into the mix at this point, seeing what we can get in terms of the maximum amount of funding we can, we can try to get ourselves eligible for, and then go back and try to supplement with those other uh, programs that I told you about that we're still waiting for guidance on so that we can drive that number down. But if we can get all of that investment, plus the fact that don't forget, we also get an offset from, uh, our Walpole agreements in terms of additional capital investments, our ratepayers will be seeing a substantial amount of investment either with federal or outside funds or third party payers as opposed to our ratepayers, which would be a tremendous benefit to the community over the next 10 years. It would put Rob in a really good position to, uh, in terms of his plant you know, capital assets and his operations. So. That's why we went a little aggressive on this and did not want you to be put off by some of those numbers because we do have 
I think some other offsets to come. And really the goal here is to try to fit this within a very reasonable amount of our own local share in that. So take advantage of the federal money and the office spending while we have it. It's not gonna last forever. And if we can get the maximum amount through this funding cycle, it will set us up in very good stead for the next seven or 10 years. So that was the point. A lot of information there, a lot of big numbers didn't want people to get too upset, but that's that was the strategy. And then timing wise, we'll see, like I said, we'll know something by June as to how we stay on that whole process. Okay. Uh, did, did I see something about a, a, a need for a vote at our town meeting, at the village meeting? Probably, again, because we won't know about any kind of funds until June. So if we do end up doing something, I would do it as a special vote if we have to go forward with it. Because most of our funds, if you look at, at the way he laid it out in his application, the first state fiscal year funds are really only for planning and design. State fiscal year 25 is where you're actually going to spend real money on construction. So right. that'd be next year. And that would be the next cycle. So okay. we would actually be able to do that as part of our regular village meeting. Okay. But the, uh, the, uh, because I, I raised it for, for two reasons. One is that if we do need to do something this year, we need to get right. the schools to have a special meeting. I don't think we're going to, because again, if you just look at, at the way that, that we're breaking out our request for the funds, mm -hmm. the max we're asking for in, in the current state in that fiscal year 24 is 140,000. 140,000, yeah. So. You know, that's not something we brought in bond. Okay. The rating, <clears throat> the rating summary on the back of that front first page. Yeah. Okay. We have a hundred. Is that? That's all the points we got. He does that as. Um, that's not the. Official rating, he just does that as his own preliminary. Yeah, part, so, of the, part of the application. Right. So there will be more points of words than that. It, obviously, the average income of the residents is a key yeah. point compared to the state. And the other thing that we keep driving home, and, and I got to give Rob a lot of credit here, is the way this dryer works. With all the concerns people have about Coventry and hauling sludge and all these other disposal issues, he's way ahead of that curve. And, and the idea would be, you know, state of Vermont, if you want other people to follow the lead, give us some help here yeah. and make us an example that other people can follow. I, I think that's a message we should And you know, we're trying to hammer it. In fact, when the state people were here a couple of weeks ago for that road tour, the mm -hmm. governor's road show, I made sure I grabbed a couple of people and mentioned that to them. I said, listen, you know, I realize we're not Lake Champlain, but we are on the Connecticut River. We do have some impacts on watersheds and quality of life. And this is a hell of a project. You guys should be- It's an example that other communities can use. 100% sustainable, makes so much sense. And, you know, just on so many levels. And the fact that we have one landfill in this in this state and it's eventually going to have to close because of capacity. Yeah. And it's already under multiple lawsuits about other environmental impacts of that. You know, this is this is a gold you know, golden opportunity for them. So we've been hammering that point home and we'll continue to do so. Because some of the of the uh, uh, sewer treatment plants dump their sludge on fields. Uh, yeah, there is some class B stuff, but this uh, is not as much as it used to be. Yeah. Most of it goes to coverage, I guess. Yeah, pretty much uh -huh. it goes to the here or there. There's other places it goes to, but yeah. Uh -huh. Canada just shut everybody off in the US uh -huh. last week. They're all about taking it to the Why? Shut it down. Because it can. It's hard to take it out. Right. Well, like, there's yeah. a lot, I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of unknowns in some of these, right? The PFAS and some of these other further chemicals now people sure. are starting to get more and more concerned about. And, you know, this is, I mean, we used to have obviously, right, two places we could dispose of the sludge, and now we're down to one. Mm -hmm. And it's a real problem. You know, 
Yeah, so I think it was everyone. Sue's treatment is going on the way. So we're going to nope. figure this out one way or another. So is there still uh, a, a good interest uh, in the uh, fertilizer? Probably more interest than we could ever make product. Really? Wow. It's, for, for a farmer, it's a tremendous uh, product. It gives them a huge yield. It's a, it's a good release in terms of the, nit the nitrogen, I guess, that it releases. They really like what it does for the soils. And it's easy for them to apply. Yeah, because it's dry. Well, because it's dry. And to mix it, it's very simple for them to handle. So it doesn't smell. I mean, the old wet application. Oh, yeah. You know, the farmer's field after a wet sludge application. It reeks. Yeah. Well, go down through one hole. Um, and, and then it would have to walk off with them. It was so, like, well, near the Adams farm, and they've got giant tarp over you know, oh, sure. a sludge pond. You know, which is what you do otherwise, you know, if you have cattle. So, you know, it's, it's, that's a lot harder to move around, especially with all the regulations. You have to go spray it in the air, and it all has to be directed to the ground. And we're still working uh, on the heat capture, which we think is another. Uh, underutilized asset of this drying process. Mm -hmm. And part of this design of the sludge handling will try to capture some of that as well. So that's why we're hoping that these energy efficiency grants will really take a look at what we're doing here and try to help us really make this a viable alternative. So other people can basically just copy the process that we've gone through. All we gotta do is just get bigger units. Yeah. Right? Ours is just based on our volumes. So but we I give Rob all the credit for that. Instructional really, video. He really yeah. yeah. He really has. Without him, this thing doesn't work. So yeah, I really we appreciate, appreciate all of that work. Absolutely. Okay, so we've covered the 10 year um, wastewater treatment plant update. We've covered CWS, sorry, the clean water yes. funding um, application for uh, fiscal year 24. And we, we did previously out of, so out of so order. order do the debt schedule. Is there anything else in the debt schedule that you need to point out, Scott? No. Or? So we'll get you an update on that number. Okay, okay good. Thanks for noticing that. That would take us to item number four on the agenda, which is the 5K run. Is that what that is? Uh, yeah. Yes. For Central Elementary School. We do this every year. It's always a blast. I'll move to the grant the application for a grade. The central school. Any a second? Second. Any further discussion? We see what the route is. We can have plenty of watchers to keep track on all the key points. My husband and I, and so, and uh, one or two of my sons have done it for several years. I don't think we did it last year, but we're always willing to help. It's it's fun. Watch the watch the runners. They come all dressed up. Have a good time. I will say this to you. I don't know how long the basketball season is, but the uh, Saturday morning and Sunday mornings, I get places yeah. at the middle school. Yeah. So, um, but yes. basketball might be over by April 1st. Oh, you know? yeah. So it just, it, it said it's going to start at the middle school. Mm -hmm. A lot easier if there wasn't a basketball. It's going on at the same yeah, time. The same time. Yeah. I'm sure they probably looked into that. Figured it out, yeah. So, anything further? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None? We're good. And it's, oh, I was supposed to put that allow for, you're signing that, right, Scott? Yes. So, yeah. Yes, manager approval. Number five is the annual village annual report, which will be coming up in. Um, I asked for this to be put on here because it was someone suggested to me that we consider um, Ray Masuko as our annual dedication um, for this year. The town did not, um, but that they had to plan before that happened. So, so I think it would be a good idea. But if someone else has other suggestions, I'd like to hear. Are you looking for a motion? A uh, motion yeah. would be good. No, no. Well, but we can have no. a discussion too. So, oh, go ahead. I'll do. No, I'll go ahead and make the motion. <laughs> All right, I'll make the motion that the Bellasol Board of Trustees for the annual report dedication that we dedicated to Raymond Masuko. Be a second, please. I'll second. Okay, is there any further debt in um, discussion of that? 
The only thing I would ask is who will do the dead, who will write up the dedication? Someone in the office be able to do that? <laughs> I mean, I'm sort of looking at her. Yeah, Betsy? Betsy? I think it's a we situation. We will figure it out. We. <laughs> okay. Well, she's the writer of the group. She like this. Talk, talk to Charlie Hunter, too. He's uh, <laughs> much like this friend. We will figure it out. He might, uh, he might be helpful. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we have done the dedication. All right. Thank you. I got a picture and a photo. Uh, there, there are, do sure you want us to there. just go our normal avenues to try to find? Uh, there's a, there's, I've seen at least a couple of great photos of him recent, so yeah. I'm sure we can find. Yeah, it should not be difficult to find. Them. Oh, that too. Yes, but I also mean a photo for the cover. A oh, I don't know. We have no one thought. No one has thought about it, unless you have a suggestion. I know you're, you. Well, you do. Uh, I had a thought, but I didn't want to be. Uh, Blurred it out. Come on. Then. Well. We did this a uh, aesthetically and uh, improvement in these north end of the village as you enter and leave, uh, being a, i.e. the heady green and then a follow up from Shaver. Uh, oh, the new business, yeah. Uh, business. I just thought maybe we might uh, do something with the, the heady green. I mean, it sat the way it sat yeah. for years, and it's a night and day difference. It's a big improvement. and. The edge um, to the village to make yeah, it's on a, the north looks nice, really nice now. Looks yeah. nice. With that idea of consideration. Sean could do a drone photo. Yeah, maybe. Oh, and it's right. Bell's false tire now. It's Bell's false tire? Bell's false tire. Yeah. All right, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so How's that sound, guys? Are open? Um, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's that sounds good. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice. Now, maybe we'll get your house. <laughs> I was wondering if Stefan might be interested in those. Uh, Manhole cover there. What's manhole cover? The one for the recycle. Oh. Maybe for target practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it, yeah. They do make a nice clan. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. They might ricochet. You know, I, I know we don't, we don't want to spend that kind of money, but it's but in some communities, I know like the Washington State where I live for a lot of years. They stamp them. They, do, they, put, they do artwork. On wow. them. And Brattleboro has some of those like that too. So it, it's extra money. I don't know sure how much more it is, but, right. but they do artwork so that people come and actually do like you can't do it in the street rubbings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but they're very distinctive and people come to look at them. Mm -hmm. I wonder about how, does, how many people get run over to <laughs> with manhole covers. But we do have quite a few. Yeah, so that next would be to review the agenda items for the next meeting, uh, March 14th, 2023. Where, we want, where are we on the budget cycle? So in that meeting, we will have a follow-up discussion on ARPA, we'll have a discussion on police and fire, and general fund. Okay. And then we'll have a, just a general update on the stuff that we've already discussed, because we have some adjustments and changes as we've talked to him, so we'll mm -hmm. run that update as well. Okay. Review items for the joint board agenda meeting. That would be May 30th. We've got some time, quite some time to go with that. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a date specific for the uh, for the uh, tax sale? We'll talk about that on the other business. Oh, okay. We're actually going to report on it. Yeah. Great. That sounds good. I was at the one we had. Oh, okay. um, review and approve orders, bills, and warrants. Motion to approve the orders, bills, and warrants is circulated here tonight. And a second? Second. All right. And any further on those? Do not. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Wade's still signing right now. No. <laughs> okay, good. Um, other business? We so will, yeah, to right. answer uh, Jake's question, we did have a tax sale, mm -hmm. and uh, we had 13 properties that were put up for auction. Six of the 13 sold, <laughs> so we are in the process of finalizing the uh, certificates of sale for that. And at this point, we are probably overall down to less than 100,000, I think, in, in total uncollected. In the 90s, a little, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. When it's for all the, said and done. For the village. Just, the village. Just in total. And it was watering sewer. 
like it also includes it, some and utilities, it also includes okay. penalties and interest, but the total. So I think when we started, we were at 430. And I think when it's all said and done, we'll be down to under 100,000. Yeah. Wow. yeah, and he's, you're including town and village sure. together. Yeah, correct to do that. Yeah. Okay. And then we've had a discussion, and we'll talk about it more at the May meeting to do another potential sale because we'll have another, obviously, cycle. Some people will more than likely end up joining the list. Um, and at that point, oh, yeah. then we'll probably look at doing something with the notice in August and the sale in either late September or October. So we'll and of course, that. the number will change because they're going to have tax that will be passed due from the, the last right. fiscal year, right. too, right? Based so on our policy, right? They have to go two years to lengthen in order right. to be eligible for sale. There are some people that just missed that cutoff. Some people that are going to be eligible because they were in that BHFA sort of uh, freeze fell out. Yeah. And so now some of those people will be in the potentially uh, in a tax sale, and then we'll have a few new additions. Yes, yeah, and they have to be over $2,000, just in that agreement. Anyone under two doesn't go on the list? I don't remember the cutoff number. <laughs> I think it's two. I thought it was two. Yeah. Huh? I think it was two. I would have yeah. to look. I don't remember that, but I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. And so what happens with the other seven? They'll go back on, and we'll see if there's any interest in another opportunity. Unless they fix it. Redeem it before that, yeah. Although I'm looking at those properties, I could see where they they might not go anywhere. There's a possibility that one or two of them might sell. I know it's spring because there's a moth in here. I just saw that. And yeah. Leonard, there goes. <laughs> it's come inside to stay warm. I guess that's uh, supposed to be grandpa. I guess now yeah. we have no more weeks of winter <laughs> if the moth appears. Yeah, the, the moth bed. appears. Okay. So yeah, so we'll we'll. Uh, We'll have some conversation about okay. um, Wade. Any other, okay. no. other business? Jigs. All set. Okay. Uh, I think I'm good tonight. Um, We're all set. Seven and all set. Okay. We do have an executive session coming um, to do now. We will not have any um, action taken when we come out. Um, therefore, it will be the end of the meeting. And it is on contracts. If you should sure decide on a labor relations council. And you could invite Alyssa and myself as right. part of that executive session. Okay, I move to find the premature general public knowledge of contract matters uh, will clearly place the municipality of substantial disadvantage. Uh, because of uh, the, the disclosure. Uh, so that's the first motion. Right. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 That motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you include, and you include Alyssa and. I'm going to do that in the next finance one. Director. Do I need them in both? Probably should. Finance Director. Uh, and include uh, the municipal manager and finance director. Okay. So all those in favor, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Second motion, please. I move the board into executive session to discuss uh, contract matters uh, under provisions of Title I, Section 313A, 1 of the Vermont Statutes, and invite the municipal manager and finance director <coughs> to attend. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We are now going into executive session. Thank you and good night.